In my last couple of videos I introduced the resistor and the LEDs and diodes talked a little bit about the battery now we're going to look at the multimeter so the multimeter is a really important tool for learning electronics and for measuring electronic circuits after you know what you're doing even so you always need a multimeter it should always be in your electronics tool so to begin with we're going to look at voltage this meter makes it really easy all you got to do is set it to voltage it does the rest some other meters have more settings you got to be aware of and uh, this is a digital multimeter of course it displays on uh, the screen there if there's a needle moving that's a more complicated multimeter to work with we're gonna focus on these digital ones and the auto ranging ones all I have to do is set it to voltage so one side of the battery is negative the other side's positive the negative side will put the black probe on and you can also think of the black probe as common that's a common point in uh, circuits and stuff usually you put the black probe and so we put the red probe on positive now you can see we have about 8.6 volts now with this meter we don't have to worry about putting it backwards either if we put the red probe to negative black probe to positive now you see we have a negative 8.61 volts and the way to think of this is that the black probes always zero volts and so we got zero here and then on the positive side we have 8.6 more volts than the black probe if we put the black probe on the positive side now the red probe will be more negative by about 8.6 volts so the next big measurement we're going to take is resistance so I had this resistor in my assorted electronics piles I just noticed it and I don't know for sure the resistance looking at the color code I'm pretty sure it's 51 kilo ohms 51,000 ohms but the easiest way to check is the multimeter so we're gonna set the meter to the Omega symbol it's an auto ranging meter again so all we have to do is set it to the Omega symbol some uh, resistors have a range of resistance you want to make sure that the setting is higher than what you expect the resistor to be but in this video we're going to keep it simple just use the auto ranging meter so it doesn't matter I'm going to turn this light on doesn't matter which side of each probe you put the across the resistor it's uh, not polarized so you see it's 51.15 and in the top right corner it says K ohms right now when uh, you're not measuring something that goes to M ohms for mega ohms so this is 51 kilo ohms according to the meter so remember the uh, resistors have tolerance so this isn't going to be exactly 51 kilo ohms even though that's what it's rated at it can be 1% higher or lower so it can be about uh, 51,510 ohms or 50,490 ohms it can be 1% higher or lower than its rated value but of course usually they're much closer like this one is it's only uh, about 150 ohms off instead of about 510 ohms and now we're going to measure current so I attach the battery to one side of the resistor and then the other side we have open because you need to complete the circuit with the meter to measure current and so current is voltage divided by resistance so I already did the math 8.6 volts divided by 15,000 is about uh, 0.16 milliamps so less than a milliamp and so we're gonna set the meter to milliamps just to make it simple now the uh, negative side of the battery I'm gonna put directly to the probe and then we're gonna take the red probe and put it to the resistor to finish the connection and you see it's 0.16 milliamps of course that's in the microamp range so we'll set the meter to microamps it's not completely auto ranging with uh, current measurements on here when you're measuring the amperage but again you can see it's about 168 microamps so now we're going to look at another nice measurement that this particular meter can take most meters can take this measurement I think these days at this point we have the continuity and the diode tester so right now it's continuity I'm going to set it to diode testing and we're going to test these two LEDs LEDs are a type of diode of course now this is my polarity indicator circuit so these LEDs are parallel to each other but they're 
put in the opposite way. So when we take the measurement, one will be forward biased and the other one will be reverse biased. So first we'll put the red probe on top, the black probe on the bottom. Now you see the green LED lit up. That lets you know that the green LED is the one forward biased right now. The red LED is reverse biased. And you see a number on the display. That's the voltage drop. So the LED is blocking about 1.87 volts. It takes that much voltage before it will conduct. But after that it conducts pretty freely. But it takes out about uh, 1.87 volts from a circuit. Now we're going to flip the probes and take the measurement. Now you see the red LED lights up. That's because now the red LED is the one that's forward biased and the green LED is the one that's reverse biased. And the LED has a slightly lower voltage drop, about 1.8 volts. Again, that's the voltage needed before it will conduct. If you have a lower voltage, it's going to stay off even though it's forward biased. But once it gets above about 1.8 volts, it will start conducting. So now normally when I talk about LEDs, I'll tell you they have about a 1.5 volt drop. That's just kind of a generic number. Different manufacturers and stuff will have a different uh, voltage drop, but it's generally in the range of 1.5 for these particular LEDs. And so if you buy a new set of LEDs that are different from ones you already have, it's still not a bad idea to take that measurement and see what their drop happens to be. And of course, we take the same measurement with the diode because LEDs are just a type of diode. This is a rectifier diode and when we measure this one it doesn't light up so you can't see that but you can see it blocks about 0.628 volts. It has a forward voltage of about 0.628 volts. That's how much voltage it needs before it conducts. And we also saw that it conducts with the red probe on this side, the black probes on the side with the stripe and then that conducts. So it's forward biased right now this is the cathode side, this is the anode side of the diode. If we reverse it, now you don't see anything. That's because it's reverse bias right now. It's blocking current. So the voltage just builds up across it and it blocks it. No current flows through it. So now, I commonly use the 470 ohm resistor with 9 volts in circuits with LEDs because that keeps it below the LEDs normally recommended uh, 20 milliamps of continuous current. So just with the resistor, remember we don't have a 9 volt battery, we have about 8.6 volts, but it'll be the same. But we should get about 19 milliamps. So I'll move the meter over and set it to measure milliamps. And I already have the positive side on one side of the resistor there. The negative side again, I have to connect to the black probe because we're going to complete the circuit through the meter and you see it's uh, slightly lower than 19 milliamps it's almost 18 milliamps but again remember the battery voltage is slightly lower so that is to be expected and so now of course we're going to add the LED into the equation because that's what we've been using in the circuit remember the LED is dropping about 1.5 volts we saw it was actually slightly higher but we're going to keep the math simple here so 9 volts for a new battery, newer battery, minus 1.5 volts would be 7.5 volts. So now we lost that voltage from the circuit, so we're going to have 7.5 volts across the resistor. So we divide the resistance from that voltage, and we'll get about 16 milliamps in that range. Remember, the voltage is slightly lower, and the voltage drop of the LED is slightly higher. So again, we'll go to a negative here. But we should be in that range of about 16 milliamps. And you see it's a bit lower, uh, about 13.4 milliamps. But uh, it's close enough. Remember, we have lower voltage and more voltage drop from the LED. So this is probably where we should expect to be. And now, one of the great things about measuring voltage is it's really easy to do it, even while the circuit's in operation. And so, we got it set to measure voltage. So now this is the complete circuit and first thing we'll do is we'll measure the voltage across the two components coming from the battery and you see it's lower. It's lower for a number of reasons. There are more resistance to the battery because of the wires and the connections and stuff but also currents flowing through the components 
and you need a little bit of current to flow through the meter so it's taking away a little bit of current so we're going to get a slightly lower voltage reading but uh, as you saw it was it was fairly close so now we're going to bypass the LED and take a reading of the voltage across the resistor by itself and now you see it's in the range of about a volt and a half less because remember the LED is blocking about a volt and a half actually a little bit more but in any case the voltage finally making it to the resistor is the battery voltage minus the LED voltage drop and so you can measure it there so after you get a voltage higher than the voltage drop of the LED it pretty much lets current flow freely after that but as I said it takes out the voltage so the voltage across the resistor the resistor sets the current based on that voltage so you can learn a lot about a circuit just taking voltage readings directly even while the circuits in operation whereas resistance you can't have current flowing through there and you have to have a dead end otherwise it'll take the resistance of every component involved and then with uh, current you have to open up the circuit you have to stop current flowing and make it flow through the meter but voltages you can take those readings at any time